Okay, Dane. Praise God. How you doing today? I'm doing good. How are you doing? Amen. Just great. Just great. So now, now, now you are Q, Q, Anna's, uh husband. Is that correct? Yeah, that's correct. Amen. Amen. Um, let me let me ask you, Dane. Are, are are you ready to be faithful to God? That that was the question the Lord told me to ask you. Are you ready to be faithful to Him? Because the only way a man and a woman, a husband and wife, can be faithful to one another, they first must be faithful to God. If they are unfaithful to God, they end up being unfaithful to one another. So the Lord wants me to ask you, are you ready to be faithful to him? You know what being faithful is? Faithful is, it's like with you, you want your wife to be faithful to you, which is she, you want her to be your wife. No other man would be involved. Well, in, in God's situation, he wants you to be faithful to him. No other spirit is involved. You, your spirit, your soul, your body is faithful to God because we are espoused and waiting for that marriage supper of the Lamb to be wed to Jesus Christ. So in other words, we are engaged to Jesus Christ. But until we are married, we are continue to be faithful to him. That means to serve no other God. When we serve other gods, then we are not faithful to God. We are committing spiritual fornication and spiritual adultery, and that separates us from God. So the Lord want me to ask you, Dang, are you ready to be faithful to him? Yes, I'm ready. Amen, amen. Now, Dane, the reason why you it, you have found it difficult to be faithful to, first let me ask you, have, have, have you given your life to the Lord? Have you repented of your sins in times past and, and asked the Lord to come live his life in and through you? Have, have you ever done that before? Yep. Okay. Now, the reason why you could not be faithful to God, Dane, is because you've never been delivered from the unfaithful ones. Satan and his demons were unfaithful to God. Okay? So, so, so therefore, when you first came to Jesus Christ, Dane, it was just your spirit that was birthed into the family of God, your spirit. But you are more than just a spirit. For this earthly realm, you have a soul, which is a mind. You have your mind. You have your will, you have, you have your emotion, and you have your body in order to dwell on this earth. Where in your soul and in your body, you have been unfaithful to God. That's the reason why you have been unfaithful to yourself and unfaithful to, to your wife and unfaithful to others as well because you've been unfaithful to God. Why? Because those spirits are still in this housing. They still have a room in, in, your, in your emotions in your mind, in your will, and also in your body. They have never been cast out because, again, it was only your spirit that was birthed into the family of God. So there never been an anointed and appointed, appointed servant of God to confront those spirits, those unfaithful ones, those spirits that was living and residing in your soul realm and in your body. God, there never been a servant to confront them and command them to come out of God's house to come out, just come, just leave his property because you are his property. Now, this must be done according to the word of God because Jesus has dedicated authority to his body on earth. Those who have his spirit living and reigning and ruling in them and who believe in his name, he said, these signs shall follow them. And one of those signs is they shall cast out devils. Out of where? Not out of the spirit, because devils are not in the spirit once you are born again, but they are in the soul and they are in the body. No one ever done that uh, to you, and that's the reason why you could never be faithful to God, and you definitely could not be faithful to your wife. You understand? Yes, amen, sir. amen, amen. So he's going to set you totally, totally free. Totally free. He's he's gonna he's gonna throw out those unfaithful ones so you can be faithful to God. And I'm telling you, once you're faithful to God, you can now live and be faithful to your wife. Okay? 
be, be, live, be fake for you. That means those devils will no longer be in you. Now, I don't know if you're aware or not, Dane, but one of the devils that, that entered you through a childhood molestation was a demon spirit that called itself to be your wife. It's, called, it's a spirit wife. It's a demon that is, that is in the spirit realm that is, that is posing to be your lover. It's a spirit lover, a spirit wife. And, 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 and this thing is the one who, who always led you to be unfaithful to God and also unfaithful to yourself, then unfaithful to your wife. It's always telling you things against your wife, always accusing your wife of doing this, that, and the other. You know, this thing also, this spirit also would appear to you in your dreams to maybe look like your wife or look like a girl that you already slept with. And this thing will have sex with you, and you will be thinking that it's your wife or, or a girl that you had sex with in time past. But actually, Dane, it's a demon spirit. Anytime you have sex in the dream, that is a spirit lover. It is a spirit wife because that's, that's the way that they work. Some, sometimes they will make their presence known by you, by you experiencing Maybe you feel like somebody has sat on the bed and the bed went down. You look and ain't nobody there, but you know you felt that bed go down. And these spirits will sleep with you. They will sleep with a person. Their intention is to kill, to steal, and to destroy. Their intention, they are unfaithful to God, so whoever they dwell in, they also that forces them to be unfaithful to God and unfaithful to others, including one's spouse. So, so that, that is a spirit wife that's been talking to you for many years. It's been talking to you for many years. And again, the spirit lover um, is a spouse to human beings through some type of childhood molestation. Now, I notice with men, most likely men come across as little, when they little boys come across some type of pornographic material. So some men end, end up being touched by another uh, older man or a young man when they were a child. But I, I observe with the men, the, about, I say about 99.9% .9 of the time, the, the spirit into the man, went, and then all of a sudden you just come across some pornographic material when you're a little boy. So molestation thing is when you were a little boy, you came into the knowledge of sex, and you shouldn't have because it wasn't your time. And that was when that spirit entered into you. Now, a lot of men don't, do not like to discuss this, and that's the way the devils want. They don't want to be exposed. They want you to keep it quiet, hush up, hush up, don't say anything about it, because as long as you do that, that gives them legal right to remain in God's house, which is your, which is your soul and your body. But you have to confess. We all have to confess to, to our wrongdoing. We have to confess our sins to one another. And that means to, to God's spiritual mature uh, children. So, so you have to confess these things so the door can be opened so that when, 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 when I speak this disconnection in the spirit realm, then these devils won't have no legal right to not to come out of God's house. Because if you give them legal right to stay dang, by being unwilling to confess to your wrongdoing, they will stay. And they're not going to leave because you give them legal right to leave. Just like in that natural realm, a thief, you can, you can uh, uh, give a thief permission to come into your house. And the, and the cops know it's a thief, but if you give that thief permission to come in your house, then the cops know, well, I can't do anything about it because you give that thief permission to be in your house. Only way the cops can can uh, uh, arrest that thief is is that you must give the cops permission to arrest the thief. If you don't give the cops permission to arrest the thief, the cops say I can't do anything. Same thing with with the Lord. You have to give the Lord permission. And how you give the Lord permission? You have to confess to your own wrongdoing, not to your wife's wrongdoing, not to any other person that maybe have done you wrong. It's not about them. This is about you. You have to make your own confession to the Lord that, Lord, I have sinned. I have come short. 
of your glory. Yes, this thing happened to me when I was a little boy, and it, it had a, a, a terrible effect on my mind. You know, these things got to be confessed. You know, don't hold Satan dirty secrets. You know, he he blossoms, he grows whenever whenever we choose to to conceal his dirty secrets. So the Lord said whatever was done in the darkness, it will come to the light. And Satan don't like not like the light because the light exposes him. He likes to hide in darkness. So don't give him that covering. You confess. So that spirit wife again, dang, it entered you when you were a little boy. So as I was talking, what have the Holy Spirit brought back to your remembrance of, of, of something that happened to you in, in, in a sexual nature? Well, when I was a little boy, um, I used to watch um, videos, pornographic videos. About what, what age? Probably about seven. Seven years old. Seven, not, now, seven-year-old little boy, how, who had those videos? What, was it your father? Yeah, my stepfather. Stepfather had those videos. Now you see how important how parents need to live a godly life for their yeah. children. Mm -hmm. You see, as a little boy, Satan set you up. He set you up to destroy your life right then and there. Because once your eyes hooked onto that, glanced onto that pornography, what you could not see, dang, was this demon spirit just zoom right into your eyes. That's lust. The spirit of lust, spirit of lust, that is a spirit lover, spirit spouse. And probably not too long after that, that's when you start experiencing masturbation. And you know what masturbation really is? The Lord told me what masturbation really is, Dane. Lord masturbation, said. Lord, so I asked the Lord, Lord, what exactly is masturbation? And he told me, he said, masturbation is when a human being is having spiritual intercourse with a spirit being. And just like in the natural, when husband and wife come together and intimately, the result of that is it's an orgasm. Where masturbation is a spirit being's orgasm. Only difference is you just can't see the partner. Now, some people, you know, who have who have who have accepted this, this spirit has manifested themselves in the form of a human being, a woman or a man, good looking, nice looking. Fine woman, fine man, and 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 the human being knowingly know that it's a spirit being in the form of a human being, and actually is having sex. Now I know that sounds ludicrous, but that's not ludicrous, Dane. That is truth. That is truth. You know, if, if God was connect to connect you to different people who 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 live in other parts of the of the uh, world, and also in this world who have have turned their back on the law and doing such as they, they will tell you. Matter of fact, I know a few. I know a few human beings who are actually willingly, willfully is having spiritual intercourse with spirit beings, and the spirit beings have taken on human form. Wow. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. These things are happening. These things are happening more than you realize. And the sad thing about it is happening to God's children. Now, we, we expect these things to happen to the children of the world because Satan is their father, their master, but God's children, it's happened amongst them. That's why so many people is needing deliverance, and, and now that they, they're getting fed up and tired, and they want God to set them free. And, that, and that's why can you see so much of unfaithfulness in marriage, you know, the, uh, Marriage and remarriage, and, and and just unfaithful to each other. You know, I get many calls where the husband unfaithful to the wife, and the wife unfaithful to the husband. Why? Because they are first unfaithful to God. When you're unfaithful to God, you just cannot be faithful to one, one another. Yeah. You know, but but praise God. I thank you uh, for calling in. I know uh, Kiana had missed it to you. Praise God. You you heard the voice of God. Now, even though your your wife was talking, that was the voice of God talking to you. He giving you another chance. I'm telling you, I'm telling you something, Dane. I mentioned deliverance to 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 this older man. He probably in his late was in his late fifty, about four years ago. Uh, he had a problem with love. They found found a program. 
He came to the healing and deliverance of meeting. He got delivered from the spirit wife. And about a year later, he came back. He had uh, disobeyed God's instruction, and the spirit wife came back again. And every time the spirit wife come back, the spirit wife always had him to be unfaithful to his wife. His eye was always looking on, on young girls. It's that spirit of lust, snake. Lust is, is a spirit of snake looking out through his eyes, and there his wife looking at him, looking at other women. So he came back. He got delivered again, Okay. About another year later, he came to another meeting. He still disobeyed God's instruction. But this time when he came, now I want you to see the grace of God each time he kept warning this man. Now God will warn you, the Holy Spirit will warn you. But if you don't hear after a while, the warning is gone. He turn you over, and, and uh, that's what happened to this man. You know, when he came back that third time, I wasn't able to minister to him because of of ministering to others and, and the time limit I had on the room. So I told them I come to their house because we've been to their house before. Told them to call me and let me know. Well, I waited and waited and waited, never got a call. They wouldn't have anything to do with me. They would talk to my husband, but they would never have anything to do with me. And I knew that was that spirit wife. That spirit wife had got him to 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 have a deaf ear towards me, you know, not have anything to do with me. Because he did not want to leave. You know what happened to eventually happened to that man, Dane? That spirit in him, remember now, the Lord said, Satan and his demon aim is to kill, to steal, and destroy. They just don't want to destroy your destiny. They don't want to just steal your destiny. They want to kill you. Not just uh, spiritually, but physically. You know that man, that man died. He died. And I know it was that spirit wife, that spirit wife in him and the spirit husband and his wife that killed him. It was not that man time to go, but because of his disobedience, he, he, he fell to adhere to the warning of the Holy Ghost. And so he's warning you today. Now, after your deliverance, those those devils that call you to be unfaithful to God, unfaithful to your wife, they will no longer be in you. But you're gonna, you still got your will. God is not gonna take your will from you. For none of us, even He didn't take His will from that man. You still have to choose to do what is right. You still have to choose to watch what is right. You still have to choose to do right. You still have to do that. You hear me, Dan? You're still going to have to choose. God's not going to make you choose. You'll be free to choose then. See, right now, you're not free to choose. You have to do whatever those spirits dictate you to do because they are in God's house. But once God kicks them out, you, your will is free. Your mind, your emotions, your body is free to choose which way you want to go. So the Lord wants you to choose what is right. And when you choose what is right, you praise you hold your hands and praise God. Say, thank you, God. I am choosing to do what is right. Now, Lord, I ask you to empower me to do what is right. You understand? Because we don't have the power to do what is right. We only have the will to do. We can make that choice. But when we make that choice, we, we trust in Jesus Christ's power, his strength. And we ask him to empower us by his spirit to do what is right. But in order for the Lord to empower us to do what is right, you must choose to do what is right. Anytime those young women come trying to call you on that phone, you you hang up that phone. Say, don't call me no more. I'm a married man. And you hang up that phone. You hang up that phone. You hear what I'm saying, Dane? Are you hearing what I'm saying, Dane? Dane, are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, for some reason you got muted. Let me unmute you. Hello. Okay. All right. You you now now you heard what I said. For some reason you got muted. That way I couldn't hear you. Yes. But you heard but you heard what I said. Okay. Yes, well, I heard what you said. You're gonna have to you take your authority and remember who it is you are faithful to. 
You are not faithful to your wife. You're faithful to God, and it's because of God that helps you to be faithful to your wife. Now, the same thing I'm saying to you, it applies to Cruana. It applies to her, too. She got to be faithful to God. There's only way she's going to be faithful to you and faithful to others is by being faithful to God. See, the devil is working mightily now because he knows his time is soon coming to an end, and he's really coming against marriage. He don't. He desire is that no one marry, no one marry. He wants everybody to live in sin, live in sin, so we all will be lost. He wants all of us to be unfaithful to God. So, you, so we live in a time now that women and men don't even care if another man or woman is married. When I was coming up, at least the, the women and men did not mess with married people. They said, oh, no, oh, that's off limits. I'm not messing with no married man or married woman. But nowadays, it's not so. That is the devil. So you're going to have to uh, open your mouth when these women approach you and say, look, I am a married man. First of all, let me get it straight to you. I'm first married to Jesus Christ. Then um, and I'm faithful to Jesus Christ. And by being faithful to Jesus Christ, I'm faithful to my wife. So you have to speak. You have to speak these things and hang up. You know, they tell me I, I need to talk to you. I said, I tell you what, talk to my wife and call your wife and give your wife that phone. <laughs> I guarantee you that hang up then. But God going to set you free. Now, he's telling you this, day because you're going to still be tested in that era. Another young woman who seems not to want to take no for an answer. And you're going to have to be faithful to God. Be faithful to God. Now, I, I went, my husband was unfaithful to God. That's why he was unfaithful to me. Second year of our marriage, he was unfaithful. But I didn't find out to the 10th year of our marriage. And praise God, I found out at the right time. That was the time when I fell madly in love with Jesus Christ. I was in love with Jesus Christ when I found out. So I thank God for letting me find out then because I found out before then we would never be together because no way I would have forgiven him because I wouldn't have been faithful to God, so I couldn't have forgiven him. But God waited until I was madly in love with him. And it was like the Lord told Satan, okay, go ahead, let Terry find out. I'm going to show you she loves me, you see. And so when I found out, mm, 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 I tell you, betrayal is a terrible feeling, terrible feeling. Ten years of marriage, I thought the man was faithful to me. Found out he was unfaithful for two years, and that answered a lot of things that was happening in our marriage around that time. That betrayal, it just struck my heart. It was terrible. It was like a knife went through me. And then the devil started talking, telling me what, what I should do. But then it was like I saw Jesus, and I loved him. It was like I had to choose between Jesus and the devil. Jesus represented forgiveness, and the devil represented unforgiveness. And both of them looked mighty attractive to me at that time. But I kept going left, right. I look at Jesus, who represented forgiveness, and I look at unforgiveness. I didn't see Satan, but I saw unforgiveness. But Satan and unforgiveness the same. So finally, I made my choice. I said, Jesus, I choose you. And I, I confessed to him. I said, but Lord, I choose to, to forgive my husband, but I cannot forgive him. So I ask you to put your forgiveness in my heart towards him. And you know what, Dane? He did that. Today, it's as though my husband had never done it. You know, he had, he done, had done things I didn't like, and I never brought, brought it up because as though he had never done it. I have truly forgiven him. Why? Because Jesus put his forgiveness in my heart as I chose to forgive him. You see how I was powerless to forgive my husband? But I had a choice rather to forgive him. Because according to scripture, that was biblical ground for divorce. I could have divorced them. But the Lord wanted me to forgive him since. He had repented and asked the Lord to forgive him eight years ago. But see, he never asked my forgiveness. See, when you commit adultery uh, 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 against your husband and wife and you go and ask God to forgive you, you still must ask your spouse to forgive you because you just didn't sin against God. You sin against your spouse. But the best, but if your spouse is ungodly, 
then you pray and ask the Lord to prepare your spouse for what you're about to confess to them and ask them for forgiveness, to prepare to them. Okay? So, um, yeah, so, so, you, if, so if you ask God to forgive you, you have to ask, ask your spouse. And my husband, you know, he did. He truly repented because he never did it again. But what I found out, it was though it was fresh, brand new, you know, to me, you know, it was like it, it, it you know, it, it, he still had done it because he never asked me for forgiveness. And he told, he confessed to me uh, later that the Lord told him that he had to ask me to for, for forgiveness, but he didn't never know how to do it. You see. So, so praise, praise God. God does restore marriage, but it's up to the individuals, up to the individual. Praise God that, again, Dane, that you, that you listen to his warning because Satan had a trap. And that trap, Dane, he was going to kill you. That was Satan's aim for you was to kill you. Did you hear what I said? Yep. Not, not just give you a sickness, but to kill you where you will have a premature death. All these deaths that are occurring in the lives of young people, they are pre premature, and it's because uh, of their sin, the wrong choices they make. And that's what the enemy plan for you. He was going to kill you. That spirit right in you was going to kill you. But praise God. So what I'm going to do, Dane, I'm going to pray for you, and then I'm going to speak a fiery Holy Ghost cleansing. You need a a spiritual bath, only the Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost is, is, is God here on earth in spirit. He's the only one who can clean our inward parts um, of, of our uh, uh, body and also in, in, in our soul realm, our mind, our will, and our emotion. And when he cleans us, he, he rid us from, from the darkness that is residing or living on the inside of us. And that way you be totally, totally clean inside and out, and you'll be totally free to truthfully and spiritually worship the Lord, okay? okay. Praise the living God. I usually don't say all this, but God wanted me to say this to you, okay? So so I'm going to go ahead and, uh, and pray now. So, Father, in Jesus' name, I just thank you, Father, for this opportunity to minister your love and grace and mercy to your son, Dang. Father, you loved him before he was ever born. Even when he was born, Father, you had that watchful eye on him. Even when Satan did see him as that little boy and looking at that pornography, Father, your eye was on him and you really kept him. You protected him from a danger that he did not even know about. Satan's plans and purposes and ideas for him, you did not allow them to come to pass, Father, because you have a powerful work to do in his life. You have plans and ideas and preferences for him, and they shall be fulfilled upon this earth. For they shall live, and he shall not die prematurely, to declare the wonderful works of Jesus Christ. And I thank you, Father, not only him, but him and his wife and his family, Father. I just thank you for keeping this family, putting that hedge of fire protection around this family keeping them safe from the evil one. Give them more wisdom, revelation, understanding, and knowledge, Father. Put forgiveness in their hearts one towards another, Father. Father, thank you for ridding them of all the hurts and the pain that Satan had caused in their life towards one another, Father. I just thank you for keeping them, Father. Father, the doors that the devil had opened up for Dane, Father, and that was not your will, those doors be open. I take my thoughts in Jesus' name, and I close every door. I close those doors and seal those doors with the blood of Jesus. They were never, ever to be opened or reopened again in Jesus' name. And, Father, there are doors that the enemy has sealed and closed off to Dane and his family, and it's your will for those doors to be open. I also take my thoughts in Jesus' name, and I open every door that is your will to be open in Jesus' mighty name. Father, I just thank you for cleaning your house, cleaning your house for true worship, Father, where Dane can truthfully, finally, and truthfully worship you spiritually, Father. I thank you, Father, for cleaning your house so that you can abode in your house, where you can live in your house, where your presence can stay and remain in your house, Father. I just thank you, Father. Continue to 
Build him in wisdom, revelation, and knowledge of your word. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Father, you, you told us that whenever we come together in your son's name, Jesus Christ, you are here with us. And you the one who told us, us also that whatever we bind and loose on this earth, because it's your will that it be bound and loose on this earth, you, Father, binds and you looses in the heavens. So right now, in Jesus' name, spirit wife, in Jesus' name, I command you to come to attention. Come to attention in Jesus' name. Gather all your belongings. Take all your loaves. And get out of God's house. Get out of God's house. You lose his mind. Lose his mind. Cut out his mind in Jesus' name. You lose his will. Turn loose his will. Cut out his will. Come out of his will in the mighty name of Jesus and come out of his emotion. Pack your things and get out. Get out of his emotion. Get out of his emotion in Jesus' mighty name. And turn loose his body. Take your chains and your shackles off his body now. Loose his body. Cut out his body. Take your things, gather your things, and get out of his body. In Jesus' name, for the blood of Jesus commands and commanded you to loose him. Loose him and to let him go in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Spirit, as always, I call upon you to search and destroy darkness. They are dormantly hiding and lurking in Dane's mind. Burn every spirit in his mind. They exalt and lift themselves against the knowledge of God. Set them all ablaze. Set them ablaze, Holy Ghost. Burn, just ransack his mind. Burn his mind by your mighty fire. Holy Ghost fire, burn every image, every memory. Every picture that's been planted and embedded into the conscious, the subconscious, and the memory of his mind, set them all ablaze. Set them all ablaze. Burn them, Holy Ghost. Burn them in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire content to burn darkness. They are dormantly holding and hiding in his will. Burn every spirit in his will that exhausts and lifts themselves against the knowledge of God. And set them all ablaze. Set them ablaze, Holy Ghost. Burn by your mighty fire in Jesus' name. Holy Ghost, fire wash, rinse, clean, purify, and baptize his mind and his will in and with the blood of Jesus. Redeem his mind and will in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire continue to even perish darkness. They are dormantly holding on to in his emotion. Burn every spirit in an emotion. They exhaust and lift themselves against the knowledge of God. Set them all ablaze. Set them ablaze, Holy Ghost. Just ransack his emotion by your mighty fire. Wash his emotion. Clean his emotion. Purify his re emotion. Redeem his emotion in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire continue to consume darkness. They are dormantly hiding and living and looking and running up and down in his body. Burn every spirit in his body that exhausts and lift themselves against the knowledge of God and set them all ablaze. Set them ablaze, Holy Ghost. Burn those snakes in his eyes. Burn, Holy Ghost, burn every spirit that comes up and look out through the window of his eyes. Set them all ablaze. Burn, Holy Ghost, just ransack his eyes. Burn lust that is in his eyes. Burn around his eyes. Into front, the back, on the, in the side of his eyes. Set them ablaze. Set them ablaze, Holy Ghost, just wash his eyes. Rinse clean. And purify and redeem his eyes in and with the blood of Jesus. Wash his eyes in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire, set a blaze in his mouth. Burn darkness that is cleaving and holding on to in his mouth. Burn, Holy Ghost, just ransack his mouth. 
by your mighty fire. Burn on top of his tub. Burn under his tub. Burn between his teeth. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, burn, burn all manner of evil contaminants that stuck in his mouth. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in Jesus' mighty name. Wash his mouth. Rinse his mouth. Clean his mouth. Redeem his mouth. Purify his mouth. In and with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire continue to burn darkness that is hiding even in his nostrils. Set his nose and nostrils ablaze by your mighty fire. Just ransack his nose. Ransack his nose by your mighty fire. Wash his nose. Rinse his nose. Purify his nose. Redeem his nose. Wrap his nose in and with the blood of Jesus. Clean his nose and nostrils in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire continue to consume darkness they are dormantly hiding and living and running around in his ears and hearing. Burned by your mighty fire. Burned, Holy Ghost, just ran shack his ears. Ran shack his ears. Burned by your mighty fire. Just wash his ears. Purify his ears. Redeem his ears. Clean his ears and hearing with and in the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire continue to consume dark. They stuck. In his throat. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn those evil spirits that is hiding even in his throat. Set his throat ablaze by your mighty fire. Wash, rinse, clean, and redeem and purify his throat. In and with the blood of Jesus, in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire, set his belly ablaze. Burn those snakes in his belly. Burn their eggs in his belly. Burn every spirit in his belly. They don't move like you. They don't walk, talk, act, or sound like you. Set them all ablaze in Jesus' mighty name. Burn every spirit in his belly that look like snakes in their eggs, look like animals and insects and sea creatures. Burn them all. Burn them all. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn by your mighty fire. Wash his belly. Clean his belly. Purify his belly in Jesus' mighty name, by and with the blood of Jesus. Holy Ghost, fire even burn, burn, burn in his penis. Burn darkness that's even hiding, holding on to his penis. Set a blade, set a blade, set a blade, set a blade. Burn, 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 burn in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost, fire wash, rent, clean, regain, and purify his penis in and with the Blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire even set a blaze in his rectum. Spirits are hiding up in his rectum. Set them all the blaze. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn, Holy Ghost. Burn in Jesus' mighty name. Wash, rinse, clean, and purify his rectum in and with the blood of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, Holy Ghost fire even burn up and down his back. Burn up and down his back. Burn up and down his chest. Burn up and down his chest, Holy Ghost. Burn up and down his arm. Burn up and down his leg. Burn those rings on his finger. Burn that evil crown on his head. Burn, burn, Holy Ghost. Burn every object that was placed on his body, in his body. Burned by your mighty fire. Burn every mark that was made on and in his body. Burn by your mighty fire. Burn any piercing that was made in or on his body. Burn by your mighty fire in Jesus' mighty name. Holy Ghost fire, wash his belly. Rinse, rinse his belly. Wash his body. Rinse his body. Clean, redeem, and purify his body in and with the blood of Jesus in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' name, in the spirit realm, I take the scissors of the Most High God. I cut and detach him from the ungodly covenant of family idolatry and witchcraft. For the blood of Jesus detach him. The blood of Jesus are given him and his family and his ancestors. The blood of Jesus set him totally free. In Jesus' name, I disconnect him from every relationship in the spirit realm that the Father did not connect him to, I disconnect him. I disconnect him to evil spirit marriage, 
I disconnect him to the evil spirit wife, that evil spirit husband, that evil spirit man, that evil spirit woman, all those evil spirit children, that entire evil spirit family, I disconnect him for the blood of Jesus disconnect him and set him totally free in Jesus' mighty name. Even in the natural realm, every relationship, every relationship the Father did not connect him to, I disconnect in Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name. In Jesus' mighty name, Dane, be totally free. Be totally free in your mind. Be free in your mind. Be totally free in your will. Be totally free in your emotions. Be totally free in your dreams. Be free in your vision, in your business, in your affairs, and be totally free in your body to serve and worship the Lord and him only will you serve in spirit and truth. Be free in Jesus' mighty name. Be free. Amen. Father, fear, brother, dang, to overflow with your spirit. Don't leave him bored or vacant, but fill him with your spirit. Fill his mind with your spirit. Fill his will with your spirit. Fill his emotions with your spirit. Fill his dreams his vision, his business, her family, and fill his body with your spirit, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, for setting this captive totally free. So Dane now is free to truthfully, spiritually worship you, where he can love you with all his heart, mind, soul, body, strength, and strength, and also where he can love his wife as he loved himself. But truly now, Father, he loves himself because you have totally set him free. And, Father, I also pray for Dane House. He's the, he's the head of the house. So I pray for his house. Holy Ghost, go in his house. Search and destroy darkness that is hiding in every corner, crack, and crevice of that house and burned by your mighty fire. Go in every room and in, uh, in, in every bedroom and destroy darkness. Destroy darkness that hovers around the bed, even under the bed, the front, the foot of the bed, on top of the bed, between the sheets and the mattress, and destroy darkness. Destroy darkness that have attached itself to objects. Destroy those evil objects. Destroy by your mighty fire. Even go outside the house. Destroy darkness that hoovers around the house, over the house, even under the house, and destroy. Destroy darkness that attached to objects that was planted under the earth in his name, in his wife's name. Destroy by your mighty fire. Things that were thrown in the water that was against him and his wife. Destroy those evil things. Destroy all covenant and contracts that was made and written under the earth, on top of the earth. Even in the war, destroy those covenants. Destroy those contracts by your mighty fire in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father. Thank Amen. you, Father, for setting this captive totally free. Thank you, Father, for placing a shield of fire protection around him in his household. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. And, Father, I pray for that young lady. Because you, your son died for her. I ask you to send the Holy Ghost to convict her of sin, of righteousness, and of judgment. Give her that warning, Father, in a dream. Show your son to her on the cross. Die on her behalf, Father, in Jesus' mighty name. Thank you, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Father. You're free. You're free, Brother Daniel. Okay, You're thank free you very much. In Jesus' mighty name. So as I was praying, what was you experiencing as I was praying? Pardon me? As I was praying the fire prayer, did the Lord give you any experience, any strange thing that you felt happening in your body or on your body? Just my hand was numb. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay, that's because you're... Uh, it was the Holy Ghost purifying your hand because your hand uh, uh, touched things that actually didn't belong to you. And I'm going to detail. Touch things that didn't belong to you. But, uh, but you are totally free now. You're totally free. Okay? 
Now again, as as the Lord said of Brother James, uh, uh, now the devil is angry. He lost first. He, he lost your wife, and now he done lost lost you. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I think I think you're gonna say you two got two children, fourteen and eight. Yeah. Okay. Um, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring Kiana on. I'm gonna unmute her because she's up here too. Okay. Kiana. Kiana. Hi. Hi. Yeah. Okay. This this instruction the Lord want me to give you two. Now, 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 Brother Dane. Now you knew the things that you was doing that was contrary to the will of God. And again, you were doing those things because of those spirits that was in you. Well, what you don't know is those same spirits are in your children, especially they're really strong in that 14-year-old. Now, that 14-year-old is masturbating. He's masturbating. So that's the evidence that he already is attached to a spirit love, a spirit wife. So as you've been the head of that house, then what the Lord wants you to do is for both of your children, the 14-year-old and the 8-year-old, you need to put your hands on 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 them. On the, take your right hand, brother Dane. Put it on their forehead, and then you crew out and you put your hand on your husband's back, because that's that's you that's you uh, coming in agreement with him. And you and you let your son hear you bless him. You bless him. You pray for him. You bless him. I mean, you bless him just like you heard me bless you. You know you you speak you speak things to him, brother Dane. Uh, in reference to proper in life, let him hear you bless him. A lot of times fathers, fathers have let their children hear them, you know, uh, curse them so many times. And I'm not necessarily mean, they don't necessarily mean profanity. Anytime you don't bless somebody, you're cursing it. Okay? But let, let him hear you bless him. He thought that he needs to hear that. Now, after you bless him, brother, brother Day, now remember now, you are totally free. Now, the devil tell you who you think you are, you, you just tell the devil, I'm a child of the living God. Because you don't, all your sins have been forgiven and they've been cast in the sea of forgetfulness. It's as though you have never sinned. You hear me, Brother Dane? Lord say, it's yes. as though you have never sinned. Because the devil going to bring up the past to try to get you to weaken your faith so that you are think you are not worthy to, to be obedient to, to God's instruction here. So that's what you tell the devil. You are the son of the living God. And know in your heart that God has forgiven you. Okay? And not, not only have he forgiven you, you don't even remember. So after, after you bless him, and then after you bless, bless your daughter, now now you do each one of your children um, separately, you know, separate blessings, not a group blessing, separate blessings. But you do the okay. son first. Now, after, after uh, you bless your son, then I want you to say, I want you to look through your son, and I wait, and also look through your daughter. Now, 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 who you're about to talk to now is not you're not talking to your son, brother Dan. Okay, you're not you're not talking to him. So you're looking through him, because those spirits are in there. They are in there. Okay, don't look at him and say, Oh, my child's so sweet. Ain't no spirits in him. No, they are in there. You know, uh, uh, he's he going to change some things, things that he's been experiencing. So you look through him and you and you say every spirit. Don't call it no demon name because you got that eight-year-old child there. You say every spirit. Are, are you listening? Q yes, yes, I am. Q okay. Okay. Say every spirit. And you send the thing from the innermost part of your being. And remember who's with you. God is with you by his spirit. The Holy Spirit is watching you, and he's listening to hear his will to be, be spoken so he can bring it to pass. So you say every spirit, not yes. of the Holy Spirit, I mm -hmm. command you to cut, cut out of my son, cut out of his mind, come out of his will, come out of his emotions, and come out of his body. Now, okay. now when you now remember that you talk to the spirit, so you may get a reaction. Don't pay no attention to that reaction because that that is the devil. The devil is uncomfortable with the power of God's word. So, mm -hmm. so when you speak, you say "come out," and then you call on yeah. the Holy Ghost. You say, "Holy Ghost, I call upon you. I call upon you to search, search his." His mind, search his will, his emotions, and his body okay. with your mighty fire. 
search and destroy all manner of darkness that is holding on to his mind, his will, his emotion, and his body. In Jesus' name. And, and just like you heard me, now, you, you, uh, Brother Jane, you may wonder why I spoke different parts of your body for Holy Ghost fire cleaning. Because those yeah. are those are doors. Those are openings. That's the only way devils can get in a person. When we sin against God, our eyes sin against God. That's a doorway. They enter through the eyes. Our mouth sins against God. And nowadays, the main way people mouth sin against God is, is with fetishism and marriage of bed, which is or or, or a sex. Or a sex is not of God. That's, that's yeah. not of God. Whether you marry or not, that is not of God. Because your mouth was not made for the port to be having sex in. So when you have or sex, those demons enter in through your mouth and they live in your mouth. Because I noticed when I was commanding them things to come out your mouth, I felt that reaction from demonic spirits. So so you say the mouth, everywhere it got, they got an opening, the eyes, the nose, the mouth, the ears, the man, the penis, the woman, the vagina, and the rectum, and, and, and the rectum. Those those areas are, are opening in which whenever one is disobedient, demon will enter the person through through those openings. And when the Lord casts them out, those are the openings that de- demons will come out. They come out of those areas too. So that's the reason why you hear me, you know, proclaim a Holy Ghost fire cleansing to all those areas. Okay. okay. And then and then, then then once you command them to come out. And and once once you ask the Holy Spirit to do His fiery cleansing in those areas, then you pronounce your son free. You tell him you're free, baby. Your mind is free. Your mind is free to serve the Lord. Your will, your emotions, your body is free to serve the Lord. And then after you say that, then you ask the Father to fill him because he needs to be filled with the Holy Ghost. All those areas need to be filled with the Holy Ghost because if you don't ask the Father to fill them. That that means those areas are vacant, and those devils are gonna come back and get back in there, because they because they're gonna see a vacancy sign. They're gonna look. The Holy Ghost ain't gonna be in those areas. So you ask the Lord to 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 fill him, and then once you do that, your your son's gonna feel a difference. You'll feel a difference, and then 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 brother, uh, then you need to privately talk to your to your son about his friends, the friends he hang around with. Uh, what he be visiting over the internet, over the internet. You need to have a talk with him about that. Okay, father, father and son. Okay, he he needs to hear that from from his dad. Okay. Okay. And and also now now if 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 your son knows that you have been unfaithful to your wife, you have you ask your son to forgive you, forgive you. So I already asked the Lord to forgive me. I asked your mom to forgive me. Now I need to ask you to forgive me because because I know it hurt you, baby. Daddy, that is sin, and God has forgiven that. And Daddy don't don't want you to do the same thing. You have to come. You have to ask him to forgive because that was a tr- tremendous hurt to a child. Okay. okay. You know, and uh, and uh, y'all, you know, the same way I tell you, minister your son, you minister to your daughter. And then you come around and you you can talk to your daughter, talk to your little girl. Yes. You know, and question her about her dream. You know, always yep. question about a dream. Always. But make it a game. Baby, what, what did you dream about last night? Mama dreamed a great dream. I dreamed blah, blah, blah. And then she'll tell you what she dreamed. Okay. okay. Because when a, when a child dreams, a dream is not godly. That's an indication that something is spiritually wrong. Okay. Okay. And you two pray together. Please, please, I'm on my spiritual knees. Pray yes. together. You hear me, brother Dane? Pray yes, with sir. your wife. Pray out and pray out loud. Let your children hear you two praying together. Let them hear you praying yes. together. That that would be a love one towards another, and your whole family would be built on 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 the love of God. The family that pray together, they truly stay together. Yes. So please, 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 please. And again, brother Dane, that that test is gonna come when that young lady you tell her. That I'm not the same. No, Jesus Christ has forgiven me. I was unfaithful to him. Therefore, I'm unfaithful to my wife. And, and Jesus has forgiven me. My wife has forgiven me. And I'm not going to let no, no devil 
on hell, on this earth, come between me and God and my wife again in Jesus' mighty name. You have to talk, talk, talk it. You have to speak it. Don't come thinking it. You have to say it. Say it. Yeah. And it'll drive, it'll drive that devil away. But she keep on insisting. Talk. So I tell you what, talk to my wife. Ask my wife. Here, give the phone to your wife. I'd love to talk to her. <laughs> and I, I guarantee you, she said, that's okay, okay. She hang up the phone. <laughs> Praise the little guy. She hang up the phone. Because I know one time that woman called my house. And, and I could tell when I looked at Rob, I said, is that that woman? He said, give me that phone. I got a phone. Yeah. I said, look, this, I said, this is my husband. He's married. Don't call my house again. Do you hear me? Don't call my yeah. house again. That lady never <laughs> did call my house again. <laughs> and Rob, and Roger, he, he got praise the Lord. He gave up that, that relationship. And see, you have to be careful who you around, hang around with. You know, you can't be mm-hmm. hanging around with. Guys who are not married and guys who are married, but they ain't faithful to their wife. You can't hang around with them. I think that's where my husband mixed up with his employer. He was not faithful to his wife. And so since yeah. that was his employer, he hung around with him. This thing you know, he became unfaithful to his wife. So you have to be careful. You can't be hanging around such men. You know, if they talk unfaithfulness about their wife. You say, uh, you, you walk away. You walk away. Because such talk does not be a love in your heart for your wife. Same thing with you, Cluanna. Same thing. Yes. You, know, yes. you have to be, be careful who you profess to. Because with you, a lot of women say, girl, now you can forgive him. He don't have to fail you so many times. You rebuke that devil. That is the devil. You stay away from such women. Yes. Okay? Because God, it, God yes. is a forgiving God. And he's a re- reconciliator. He reconciles. Praise the yes. living God. Yes. Praise the God. But if you two contend to keep God, be faithful to God in, 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 in your life, then you could be faithful to one another. Then your your marriage would last until God take one of you off of this earth. Amen. And that's the way it's supposed yes. to be. Okay. Praise yeah. the living God. Thank now, you. Now, if you have any more questions, Brother Dane, you just tell your wife and she'll send me an email. As soon as I can, I, I will respond. Okay. 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 Stay right, blessed you. now. Good. You're welcome. You're welcome. Bye bye. Thank you. Praise. You're welcome. Praise the living God. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to His holy name. You know, I I love it when 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 God um uh, sends husband and wife to get delivered. Satan lost that family. <laughs> Praise the living God. 